Buenos días, bienvenidos. Good morning and welcome. My name is Nicolás Cardellino and I work at, in the development team of GenAxis with web designers and with Java and the other generators that we are using. Today I'm going to speak about the web platform and I would like to make a summary of the web platform, what's new and what's the impact on GenAxis. For those of you who have small children, uh, well, I'll ask, have you taken a photo of a group of children? They are sitting there, so beautiful, and uh, when you try to take the picture, there's one who is scratching his nose, the other one is about to cry, and the other one is eating a cookie. It's really difficult because none of them is staying still. And the web is just like that. It's changing all the time. And all the time, it's introducing novelties. There are lots of players, and each one of them pushes the web in the direction they want. And taking a picture of uh, what's going on is almost impossible. But anyway, I'm going to give it a try. And I'm going to try to explain some of the things that are a trend in our team. and that it would be useful for you to take into account. And of course, all this has an impact on version 16 of GenXs. So I'll start speaking about the state of browsers. Usually we don't speak so much about browsers, so let me tell you what's going on with them and what's new. Then I'm going to speak about the frameworks for the development of web applications, which are the ones that usually are the ones that we use to support ourselves. Then I'm going to talk about trends. And not only trends, but uh, what's being consolidated and adopted by web developers. And finally, we'll see what all this has to do with GenXs, in particular version 16. So let's talk about browsers. Let's talk about Google Chrome, of course. We cannot avoid speaking about Chrome, which is the most popular one by far. Ten years ago, it was introduced by Google. And I don't know whether you remember that when it came up, it was a disruption, it was a total novelty. We were used to the old versions of Internet Explorer and Firefox, and Google had independent processes for the tabs, so if there was a tab that died, not the whole browsing died, and something that looks so silly today was a novelty at the time. It also gave us the JavaScript 8 that was also revolutionary the performance of this engine is still the best one and it had such an effect that nowadays we have no so yes which is a runtime of have a script that allows us to run a javascript in the server so a browser that was created 10 years ago has an impact on javascript applications that are run in the server because it's multi-platform it also gives the possibility of creating multi-platform in with JavaScript. We are now basing our work in Electron and all that is based in, on Chrome. So the impact it has had has been amazing. In the last version, Chrome redesigned some things. Uh, some people liked it, others not so much, but it doesn't look like anyone will challenge Chrome as a leader. And what can we expect? What's happening now with Chrome is that Google is so distant from the competitors that it's thinking of changing completely the URLs. As uh, technicians, we 
don't have a problem, but they're saying that they have security and usability problems. So maybe they will introduce changes. They have not said which ones yet, but it's very likely that uh, they will lead to a lot of uh, discussions. Then there's Firefox. I like it. And I use uh, Chrome and Firefox a lot. Behind Firefox, there is a nonprofit organization that wants the web to be open for all. It was hit by the introduction of Google Chrome and lost market share and is now in a deep process of modernization. They are focused on parallelism. They see in parallelism the opportunity to be the navigator of the future for the applications of the future. They think that they will function at 120 frames by second with monitors of 4K. So taking those pixels to the screen will require high degrees of parallelism, and that is why they are redesigning the rendering engine in a language called Raft that allows them to program the parallelism relatively easily. The people who are very enthusiastic about this, I copied this from Sarah Sweldan. And then we have this, which is the successor of Internet Explorer. It's a good browser, doesn't have Chrome speed, but if we compare it to Internet Explorer, there's a big distance. It fulfills the standards of the W3C, and although it's a, a, it has a closed code, and like uh, the other two, Microsoft has had an open policy by informing about the roadmap of the product, and this gives predictability to what they're going to continue incorporating for the next applications. So Microsoft improved it, that's very good, and I don't think any way that it will influence much on micro on Chrome's share unless they introduce something disruptive. And then we have Safari. I have the impression that it's becoming the new Internet Explorer. Don't misunderstand me. It's a great browser. I use it on my cell phone. It has good development tools, but their policies sometimes remind me of what Microsoft would do with Internet Explorer. Safari is quite reserved about communicating their plans regarding the new standards of the WTC, and with regard to web applications, they are delaying or implementing only in part the standards that are required in order to support them in cell phones. And it reminds me what Microsoft would do with uh, Internet Explorer at the time. They didn't improve it because they thought it was a threat to their domain for desktop applications. So hopefully this will change and Safari won't become the new Internet Explorer. And then, this is Brave. It was created by Brennan Icke, who created JavaScript and is one of the founders of Mozilla Foundation. And as a browser, it's a Chrome. It's uh, based on the Chromium project. But it has two innovations that will, in my opinion, make people talk. Firstly, if you browse with Brave, it blocks all publicity as well as, as trackers or what follows the way in which we browse online and establishes our profile. And this to give us more privacy, and it has a new model for publicity. If you want publicity to be seen on Brave, you have to buy tokens. All this is based on blockchains, and you have to buy basic attention tokens 
And if you are a company that wants to put ads, you pay to the news sites or the blogs or whoever is generating a content so that they publicize your content, content and this can be monetized. And those who receive bats are those who see the publicity. For the first time, for seeing the publicity and for having that bandwidth used, we would, re we would receive those BATs and could exchange them for money or premium services in those same news sites or blogs or entertainment sites. So this browser was launched two years ago. It doesn't have much market share, but these innovations, in my opinion, are very interesting. So this about browsers. What's the state of uh, applications in the world of manual development? What are the frameworks? What problems are they facing? The problem that is more talked about at the moment is performance. If we have a good cell phone, a good processor and a good internet connection, everything goes well. We don't have delays, we're happy. Now, what happens when the internet connection is so, not so good? The other day, we were having lunch in a basement at the restaurant La Corte, and the connection was not good. And what happens if we have a cell phone which is not the latest model or is not that good? Then the problems come up. The pages are loaded more slowly. We get error messages, and that's very frustrating. And there's a problem here, because if we want the web platform to be viable for our platforms, we have to have those kind of connections for our devices. And uh, Google is one of those who are pushing more to solve these problems. Why do they mind? Because if there are no people consuming web applications, then they cannot put publicity on the web. And let's see what they have done and what's the impact on the various frameworks to develop applications. These are the three more popular frameworks. React is the most popular one at the moment which is most widely adopted. It is backed and is a project by Facebook. And it's worth uh, clarifying that React is not actually a framework. It's a library that allows us to write the view of our application, how the application will be generated. But if I want to make a complete application, I need to use other libraries with React. It's criticized because if I'm working with a team of developers, this team will have preferences and will choose certain libraries around React. And if I take a person from that project and put him in another library, it will not be as productive. We'll have to get used to other things, etc. Then we have, oh, let me add, in the last version, version 16, they worked on performance concerning two aspects, that the engine that designs is faster and that the JavaScript is smaller so that the loading times are shorter. Then we have Vue.js, which was created by a former employee of Google Seven U. And there's no company behind Vue.js. It's not like React or Angular, who have an which have an enterprise behind that uh, leads the road. This is uh, an individual group that receives donations and contributions and uh, 
has also uh, and, and benefits from the work of its developers is the one that is growing faster the rate of adoption is very fast it still does not uh, reach a level of angular or react but if it continues like that he it will end up eating its competitors but we'll see about that why does it grow so quickly it said that Vue.js is out of the three frameworks, the one that is closer to traditional progressing with HTML, JavaScript, etc. React and Angular incorporate things that are not the traditional ones, and that's why the entrance barriers are more difficult to overcome. Vue.js helps people who are not programmers maybe a designer who has some knowledge can be productive without having to learn a lot. And then Angular, which is a Google project. And uh, has the feature that it's not programmed in JavaScript, but on TypeScript, which is a language invented by Microsoft. which beyond Angular are incorporated also in GenXus. The interesting thing is that it adds type definitions to the language, which was something that JavaScript was criticized for. And it gives the developer more productivity. Angular is criticized because it may have a barrier unlike Vue, which is the opposite. It is similar to JavaScript, but it's not JavaScript. And the HTML that you program in Angular is an HTML, but it has things from Angular. And in a certain manner, the learning curve becomes thus more difficult. The advantage is that programmers have left difficulty to enter into the world of uh, web programming. Java and others see JavaScript and see, oh, it's similar, but actually it's uh, not so ma not so similar, and uh, programmers can be productive more quickly. In the last version, they worked on performance and in reducing the size of the bundle with the final application. And again, the question of performance is very present in frameworks nowadays, and it's something they're working on. But the most interesting things we are seeing come from the side of web components. Web components are several standards of W3C3C that allow us to have H personalized HTMLs that we can distribute so that others use them as easily. So the API to interact is the one we already know. We open such one, I put in the name, the attributes, I subscribe to events, it's a, sim a familiar interface. Polymer was the first framework to facilitate the development of web components, but now there are competitors with different approaches to facilitate this kind of uh, components, which are Stencil.js and Skate.js. The web component is a name that's come from Gen X, so it was a good name, and they took it. Stencil JS and Skate JS are two of the strongest players, but probably there will be new ones coming up. And in fact, Angular, that I just described, has introduced Angular element that allows the components created in Angular to be distributed as web components. But this it will be in version 7 that will be released uh, at the end of September, beginning of October. We'll see 
how it enters the market. Now let's talk about the trends that are consolidating. And we have been talking in the event about design systems. Design systems allow companies and organizations to define a set of components and rules so that users and developers can develop applications with a certain uniformity and with is usability issues already solved. Following those rules, the applications will follow a certain line and have a certain basic usability. This is something that is coming in very strongly. And not only in Airbnb and IBM, but in other smaller companies, because companies need to define their design system. And we need to be able to help them. Another question that is making a lot of noise is GraphQL. GraphQL came up as a response to web services. To to and let's see. Let's say that someone wants to have access to their data, and uh, you give them a network service. And now they want the client ordered by date of birth. And GraphQL is giving the developers this interface of command so that they can make queries ad hoc on our database. The benefits of the QL are clear. It's the benefits that the developers have with a GraphQL that have led to a wider adoption. Then we have the progressive web applications. You may remember I spoke about the web application, these web applications uh, with regard to Safari. This means that in one sentence, it's a web application that offers a user experience that cannot be uh, that is not different from a native application or doesn't function differently. There may be an intermittent connection or there may be no connection. And uh, anyway, it gives an experience that is engaging. I use the word engaging in English because I could not find the right word in Spanish. And it has to be immersive, too. What happens with the progressive web applications? Well, the stone is right now Safari. Safari is delaying the incorporation or the implementation of the standards that are required for the progressive web applications. And in some cases, they are implemented, but only so far. A typical case would be the storage. Safari automatically erases uh, everyth everything past uh, 50 days. It's not in the standard by. They decided to do it anyway. So we need Safari to incorporate these things so that these uh, progressive web apps are become more generalized. What's the impact of all this on version 16 and on GenXus in general? Yes, I was talking about the performance. Performance is something that we have to work on, and we need to make improvements so that our applications function or operate with the slow devices and bad connections. That is why we will be introducing some improvements in the first upgrades of version 16. We will have the possibility of uh, establishing that certain Parts of the page are loaded using lazy loading. For example, the images that are not going to be shown immediately can be left to be loaded later, only when you need them, if you scroll up. And the same, same thing with the grids and the web components. If I have a grid and I don't show it immediately, I don't load it, and I let it load in a different manner. 
Now, these uh, lazy loading techniques can be applied behind the scenes, so to speak. In the library of standard functions of GenXs, we are using code splitting techniques, which mean dividing the JavaScript code and only giving the client the part that are required to design the page and leaving for later those that are going to be needed at a later stage. So we load immediately the ones we know that we will need immediately, and then we load the ones that will be required in that same flow and the others for later. This is already available in the beta channel and will be in the first upgrades of version 16. The progressive web applications, the Java generator and the switch up generator will be able to generate applications with these features. We'll just take a main web panel and say this is a progressive web application. And GeneXus will ask us to give some colors and images and some more data so that we can generate what's necessary to show icons, for example, to add to the home screen of the telephone that they are installed in the user's device. It will also be capable of operating offline. It's and or rather instead of being offline, instead of showing an error message a 404, if we don't have a connection we can configure a web panel that says you need a connection, something friendly for the user, at least in the same version in this first version. And there is a tool called Lighthouse from Google that assesses whether uh, your application is progressive. And uh, we are doing 100% right now, so we are quite happy. Talking about design systems, there were presentations about this topic, and we are incorporating improvements, for example, in the knowledge base of design system that were defined out there, out of GenXus. And these are the possibility of incorporating an external CSS to that is the base CSS library and the user control object. When I spoke about design system, I said that the snippets of HTML can be easily incorporated in the HTML and used as a control in the toolbox. And finally, the stencils that allow us to make the definition of the design system inside GenXus knowledge base. Federico Salomon is going to give a presentation in Ballroom C at 11.45. He's going to speak about the user control objects. And yesterday at 11.45, Juan Michelini spoke about stencils. If you have the opportunity of attending the presentation, I recommend it. Otherwise, you can watch it on video. Claudia will be speaking about GraphQL in version 16 and the upgrades of uh, that version today at 11.45. And with regard to the Angular generator, Alejandro Silva comes next to tell you about the novelties in this generation for applications that are progressive web applications at the same time. So it's GenXus generating Angular today at 11. So I haven't got much less to much more to tell you I invite you to try version 16 which is very good and uh, it won't help you to take photos of your children but it will multiply your power of doing